and welcome back to another one of our online lectures here in world history. Today we're going to finish up the Persian Wars by looking at the Battle of Salamis. We've already looked at the Battle of Marathon, we've already looked at the Battle of Thermopylae, and Salamis is really going to be a turning point for the Greeks. Now there were other battles out there. The Battle of Plataea is a really well-known one, so I don't want you to think that these are the only battles that the Persians and the Greeks fought, but these are three of the most significant ones. So as we look at this, we're going to go back to one of our constructive response questions. And the question says, compare and contrast the Greeks and the Persians. We've been doing this for a couple of days now. As we learned who the Persians were, we've got a pretty good understanding of who the Greeks are. And through these battles as well, we can look at different battle tactics, uh, sizes of the armies, uh, things like that, that we can use to answer this question. So uh, even at the end of this particular lecture, we'll have some more information that we can add to this question. Uh, so we're going to go into this. We're going to take a look at the Battle of Salamis. So, um, some of you might be actually aware of this. Uh, the Battle of Salamis is depicted in the new 300 film uh, that came out in 2014 called 300 Rise of an Empire. I only mention this because there are some bits and pieces of the movie that do get the history right. Of course, there are many uh, parts of the movie that they over-exaggerate or simply change history on, so I don't suggest watching it to understand the history of the Battle of Salamis, but I do want to mention that uh, it is depicted in uh, that movie. So let's start with the who of the Battle of Salamis. On the Athenian side you have Admiral Themistocles. Themistocles gets a lot of credit here um, for helping finally defeat the Persians in this battle. On the Persian side you've got Xerxes again. Xerxes was the um, was king of the Persians during the Battle of Thermopylae as well. And these battles actually take place pretty close to one another. So uh, it would make sense that Xerxes is still the king there. When we look at the who, so we've got, uh, we just mentioned this, we've got an image of it, so we'll just put it up the text there. Athenian Admiral Themistocles and the Athenian Navy. And that's important to mention because this battle will take place at sea. So we, did, we do need to see the Athenian Navy there uh, versus, of course, Xerxes and the Persian Navy. So I think we've covered that pretty well, and I'm going to move on here. Of course, the featured weapon in this battle on the Greek side is going to be the Greek trireme. And there's no doubt that uh, being the well-built ship that it was with the battering ram on the front, uh, it is going to help change the tide of this uh, entire war, especially with this battle. Uh, we've talked a lot about triremes. It was in your vocab. We've seen it in engineering and empire. So we've definitely covered the triremes. All right, so let's talk about why this battle takes place. Xerxes wins the Battle of Thermopylae. We established that in the previous video. After he wins at Thermopylae, after he kills King Leonidas and his 300 Spartan soldiers, he moves south into Athens and burns Athens down. And Xerxes actually regrets this decision and has orders the city to be rebuilt the next day. Um, but what ends up happening is the Greeks were protecting their own. So he had chased the Athenians, um, but the Athenians had been able to leave the city and were able to regroup and, and, and prepare for the next fight. So as King Leonidas and his men die at Thermopylae, they're actually protecting other Greeks and allowing the next battle to take place. So that's why I have on here at the bottom, Greeks were protecting Greece. Uh, and that's important to, to note. Uh, but this is just as Xerxes and the Persians, they all along they wanted to take over Greece. And so they're just moving south through Greece to do that. Um, but the Greeks aren't going to go down without a fight. Hence the Battle of Salamis. When did this take place? 480 BC. It's the exact same year as the Battle of Thermopylae. As I told you, they take place pretty close to one another in history. Uh, and physically, geographically uh, near each other as well. So where does this take place? It takes place in the narrow straits of Salamis, which are just um, west of Athens. And uh, we'll take a look and see where this is on a map. So uh, Athens on this map would be over here. Uh, the Persians were lured into these straits, and that was done intentionally because the Persians were not good at maneuvering in tight conditions. The uh, Greeks had much better 
experience with naval battle than the Persians did. And that was an advantage that certainly the Greeks were aware of. And so what Themistocles is going to do is he's going to send a messenger over to the Persians and he's going to let them know that the Greeks are in disarray and they're not ready to fight. And so Xerxes takes the bait. Xerxes is like, okay, if the Greeks aren't ready to fight, this is a prime opportunity for us to uh, attack. And so Xerxes sends his ships right through here and finds the Greeks are actually in battle formation and are very, very much ready to fight. Hence the ruse, the the deception, uh, which is going to give the Greeks the upper hand. This is just another look at this. Um, you can see the Persians coming in here, and here you have all the Greeks in battle formation. Um, and as they kind of encircle the Persians with their triremes, the Persians are going to be at a huge disadvantage because they're going to be scattered. Their their uh, ranks are going to be uh, broken. You know, their front line's going to be broken, and it's going to really allow the Greeks to take those triremes and, and certainly put a lot of Xerxes ships out of commission. So what happened? Um, Themistocles evacuated Athens and knew that the Athenians were better at naval warfare. So when I told you that King Leonidas and his men allowed the Athenians to live and, and to get to safety, this is uh, very crucial because without that, Themistocles was never going to be able to regroup and prepare for this particular battle. So he positioned his fleet near the island of Salamis, west of Athens. And of course, at any point in time, if you need to pause and write these things down, feel free to do so. So Themistocles lured the Persians in, and the Persians had trouble turning in the narrow channel. This is the story I just described to you with the previous two images. And the Greek, Greek triremes destroyed over one-third of Xerxes' ships, causing Xerxes to... Um, basically realized that he had been defeated and, um, you know, his 30-year 30 fleet, that's a pretty big loss. Um, and you don't want to lose much more than that because it uh, certainly affects your, your, your soldiers, it affects the, the cost of building these ships and, uh, you know, everything associated with that. So that is definitely a big loss for the Persian side. And the big deal, we talk about the significance of battles, it's not so much the knowing the generals and the, uh, all the admirals. I mean, we, we certainly say a few names, but it's the significance. What changed as a result of this particular battle? And this win here for the Greeks does not destroy the Persians. It does not kill them all, does not wipe them out, doesn't kill Xerxes. But what it does is it proves that the Greeks are a really, really tough opponent. And if you're Xerxes, you start second guessing whether taking Greece is even worth it at all. I mean, he lost, uh, the, the Persians lost the Battle of Marathon. They regrouped 10 years later. They win the Battle of Thermopylae, but they lose here at Salamis. So the big significance is now the Persians were on the defensive, not the offensive. They were always kind of fleeing at this point. They're going to go back to Persia and they're going to leave Greece alone. And this is going to allow Greece to really flourish as a civilization. This is where we're going to get the building of the Parthenon and um, philosophy and democracy to really flourish in Athens. Um, and, and those things don't happen if the Persians are still there fighting the Greeks or if the Persians take over. So again, the huge significant point here is the Persians were now on the defensive. They were leaving Greece rather than invading and trying to take over. They weren't completely defeated or killed, but they're leaving Greece. So I can't stress that enough. All right, that just about does it here for us on the Persian Wars. We're coming back to our constructive response question. The question says, compare and contrast the Greeks and the Persians. And we've been able to add many different things to this question over the last few days. But what we really noticed from this particular battle is how much better the Greeks were uh, at naval warfare with the use of their triremes. There's no doubt that they were better uh, at maneuvering them, uh, certainly better at attacking with them. And ultimately, uh, they were able to take out a good number of Xerxes' ships 
uh, in the narrow straits of Salamis that are going to push the Persians back to the point where they're now on the defensive rather than on the offensive. And that just means they're not going to try and conquer and take over Greece anymore. And that's a big victory for the Greeks. So we're going to add that piece to this question. So in the end, you want to definitely take your information that you learned on Marathon, Thermopylae, and Salamis, as well as what we saw in uh, Engineering and Empire on the Persians, uh, and use that information to really compare uh, the Greeks and the Persians. So uh, we have plenty of information to use to answer that. Go ahead and rate yourself on a 4, 3, 2, 1 scale. 4 being I get it, 3 being I'm close, 2 being I've got some work to do, and 1 being I really don't understand this question. Uh, it's really good to self-assess yourself. So that's going to do it for us here. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.